Hello and welcome to Weird Around Illinois. Today we're going to talk about Mothman, or more specifically, multiple Mothman sightings, because it seems like they tend to come in groups. So let's get weird. One thing before we get started I should probably explain. We still have one member of our household who is not sick yet, or I guess technically two if you count the tortoise. But out of deference to him, we are broadcasting in separate rooms maintaining our quarantine procedures in the hopes that the last healthy family member can stay that way. Also, you can probably tell by listening that I am the sickest one now, so I apologize in advance for having to listen to my voice. With that out of the way, I guess we will move on. In talking about Mothman, you always need to start in Point Pleasant, West Virginia, the home of the Silver Bridge. Um, everybody knows there were Mothman sightings leading up to the collapse of the Silver Bridge. There were multiple sightings, kind of scattered for like a year before it happened and for several months after it happened. So this was kind of a classic case of multiple Mothman sightings. Yeah, there was also an, actually an even bigger uh, sighting area, which is, of course, O'Hare Airport. Now that had well over, if I remember this correctly, over 2,000 sightings uh, accounted for or reported in that area and you know keep in mind it's a wide space uh, some mm -hmm. sightings were obviously just mothman alone some were with a ufo but very very common there yeah and they're yeah. they're mainly like around the same time period like around 2021 if i remember correctly yeah yeah i think it stressed stretched for like a year or two but the big cluster of them was like in two months within like 2021 or early 2022 i think yeah so it's really interesting that they're all kind of bunched together in that one time frame, kind of. Yeah. And, you know, there were some other sightings in other places as well that were kind of clustered. Um, at least one of which we went to investigate ourselves, just like the O'Hare ones. Yeah. There's a, there's one in Wisconsin. It was in Tremplo. We went there for one of, our, one of our investigations, and apparently once there was, like, a family of Mothmen, from what I can remember. There was, like, a baby Mothman or something. Yeah, like Mount living Trumplo, on Mount Trumplo. Yeah. yeah. Fortunately, in our investigation, we barely found Mount Trumplo, much less the Mothman. Yeah. <laughs> like every mountain we thought may have been Mount Trumplo. There's just mm -hmm. so many. Yeah. And, you know, there were also a couple bridge collapses in Wisconsin and Minnesota. And this this could be a case of, you know, revisionist history where... All these reports come out after the fact, but supposedly there were several reports of Mothman sightings that happened before the bridge came down in, in these cases. I want to say it's like two bridges in Minnesota and one in Wisconsin. Yeah, it seems to be a recurring theme here. Definitely. Though it could also be that whenever a bridge collapses, they automatically start saying, Oh yeah, I saw Mothman last week. Yeah, that's what we're expecting to happen with the uh, Baltimore bridge collapse. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of surprised it didn't. Yeah, I think I remember you saying there may have been like one or two YouTubers that mentioned it, but that was about it. Yeah, so I, I, we've we've named a couple of cases here where, you know, there have been Mothman sightings, and it's never like one Mothman sighting. It's always like groups of people, usually credible witnesses over a short time period, making multiple reports of Mothman. And it begs the question, you know, why? Why is this happening? Now, one thing that is kind of the go-to for skeptics, whenever you've got multiple sightings of a weird phenomenon, they always go to mass hysteria. That's what they blame the UFO sightings in the 50s, 60s, and 70s on. But, you know, there could be some truth to that, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, I've... I can imagine a lot of scenarios, as, like for myself, where you know you hear something that's super scary or uh, kind of convincing, and then you know in the corner of your eye you might see something, and you, for a moment anyway, for me, you you may think it it's something, but then eventually it gets proven to be not that. Yeah, I know. I at least seem to have this a lot with UFOs. If I see like a star that is like twinkling or something, my eyes will play tricks uh, and make me think that it's moving. Oh, that's, but yeah, if that's I look closer, example. it's not actually moving. Yeah. Now imagine if you had, you know, ten people around you who you knew and trusted saying, hey, look, that star is moving. 
then you might start to believe it's actually moving. And that's kind of an example of mass hysteria. Yeah. Now, another non-real explanation for this, another explanation that, that wouldn't involve a real Mothman, would be the idea of a hoax. You know, the minute something hits the news, you're automatically getting into the possibility that somebody's going to put on a Mothman costume or put glowing red lights in a tree to look like eyes or something like that. If it's a flying sighting, it might be hard to pull off, but yeah, yeah. as you're saying, if they're putting like two eyes on a tree, I mean, that's like just like the uh, Project Blue Book uh, situation mm -hmm. where uh, people were thinking it was an owl because it was on a tree. Yeah, exactly. And uh, you know, I'm sure that accounts for some of the mass sightings that take place, especially after a Mothman sighting hits the news. It, for some reason, the minute a sighting becomes, you know, public knowledge, the first thing some people want to do is go out and make fun of it and, you know, trick people into believing they're seeing it. You know, with the red eyes, I could see how that's, that'd be kind of easy for people to pull off. Just put some red yeah. eyes and then boom, people might be might start seeing things get a red flashlight that'll work <laughs> mm -hmm. and but you know some of these the, the, there could be actual mothman sightings causing these things too there could be real explanations for it for the, the multiple sightings and you know some of those reasons well i mean the first one has to do with the nature of mothman himself right yes yeah. dimensions yeah i mean it's a very hard cryptid to miss if you like if you see a big black creature flying then you're, it's going to be obvious that there's something wrong yeah it's uh, yeah mothman is definitely bigger than an eagle if, it, if it's in the sky you really can't mistake yeah i want to say that that he, he's usually reported being somewhere between six and eight feet tall and with with those glowing red eyes and no neck it's it's a pretty distinctive looking creature so yeah if he's out there flying around i, I it's not like a Bigfoot or a, a Dogman or something where he's camouflaged and blending into the trees. I mean, this thing's right out there and flying through the air, you know, running along the highway. Yeah, and that would, that would give it more of the reason to not fear humans, which is our next point here. Um, you know, as you were saying, uh, Bigfoot, Dogman, uh, those kind of cryptids that are on the ground, they have a much better ability to hide. Meanwhile, Mothman, if Mothman is flying, that's you're not gonna be able to hide that. So you're gonna change how Mothman acts towards humans, and that's why uh, Mothman would have no fear towards humans. I feel like, you know, Bigfoot and Dogman, you know, even though they could easily overpower a human, they really don't want to be seen by humans. And they know that if humans get together in groups, it's a threat to them. So that's why they hide in the trees and you know disappear into the deep woods and only come out in the, in the dark and things like that. Whereas Mothman, he can just fly away. I mean, he's got no fear of humans whatsoever. Plus, he seems to have these weird mystical powers that people attribute to him. That you know, whether it's confusion or erasing people's memories or changing future events or whatever, you know, he he just seems like the sort of cryptid that doesn't care if you see him or not, or or at least isn't afraid if you see him. Got such bad luck that he's got nothing to lose. Yeah, yeah. And with all this being said, I'm surprised that he isn't the Mothman in general isn't seen more in general, to be honest. Because, like, yes, we have clusters of sightings sometimes, but I'm surprised that we're, we aren't hearing about this, like, every day or something. You see, that lends more credence to the idea that he's like a recurring creature, like a cicada or something that comes out every 17 years or every 25 years or something. Or, you know, maybe he's an alien that just visits Earth from time to time, because he does just disappear without a trace for years on end. Then suddenly there's this cluster of dozens or hundreds of sightings, and then he disappears again. It's interesting you mentioned cicadas, because think about that like newest cicada breed that came to Illinois like just this summer. And I like bright red eye. Yeah. Like a mothman. Yeah, I think we jokingly called it the Mothman Cicada when it first came out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was not a fan of it personally. <laughs> no. Yeah, I mean I've gone over a fear of, you know, bees, wasps. I mean, I'll live with them, I guess, but cicadas are always going to be my top bug fear ever. I I have bad luck with them. 
things. Now with the glowing red eyes on those, oh, horrible. Yeah. And plus, they had zombie cicadas this year. Oh, I, I did not hear headlines about that. <laughs> yeah, there's this weird fungus or or this weird. Um, it, it's actually a sexually transmitted disease among cicadas. Cause them to like like their brain gets dissolved from the inside and they become zombies just flying around infecting other cicadas. Oh no. Ooh. I I'm gonna stay inside for a while. I'm glad we're all sick now. I'm not going out. <laughs> <laughs> well, on that happy note, I think I'll bring us to the, the last possible point for why Mothman sightings tend to come in clusters. Maybe he actually wants to be seen. And maybe he really is this harbinger of doom and he just you know, wants people to know that he's out there so that they can be warned that this disaster is coming. Um, maybe that's his whole thing. Maybe he's flying around trying to get as many people to see him as possible before something terrible happens. It's possible. If he comes out like every now and then, people are going to just continue being like amazed. Mm -hmm. But if he came out like every day or something... It would kind of just be the new norm, which right. Mothman very well might not want, necessarily. Yeah, yeah. You know, the whole idea that he wants to be seen and that he is this this being that warns us of bad things to come, that could also explain why he's not out there every day. It can explain that you know, why he disappears for years on end. He only comes when there's a tragedy about to happen. So, those are all things to think about with Mothman. Personally, I'm kind of hoping that we don't see him for a while. Um, there's yeah. enough doom and gloom in the world as it is. We don't need anything else. Oh. Hopefully doesn't cause another bridge collapse somewhere around us. That'd be bad. Yeah, definitely. And of course, that it, it leads me to another question, which I guess is something to ponder another time. But, you know, a major tactic of war is to blow up bridges to prevent enemy troop movements. That's certainly been the case in the war in the Ukraine. Um, were there any Mothman sightings before any of these bridges got blown up? I'd be really curious to know. Yeah, we might have to s some research around that and see if anything comes up. I hope not, because yeah. that would be an interesting topic. But, but yeah. An another thing I wanted to mention is uh, I think the cryptid Yopeman is often associated with uh, bridges too. And like it's the Yopeman is often associated with uh like bringing bad luck to people who mm -hmm. go onto those bridges but i guess just think something to think about yeah boat man likes to like run people in cars off a bridge or something like that now yeah but also like luring people onto bridges oh literally luring them place yeah it's something yeah. i heard recently it's really interesting if you make that connection especially because they don't look entirely dissimilar I mean, if it's late at night and maybe you've had a little bit to drink, a mothman could look like a, like a goat man, and a goat man could look like a mothman. It's just the difference is the wings. True. Um, I don't know. We'll have to look deeper into that similarity at some point, too. Well, at any rate, that's our take on multiple mothman sightings. And if you've had a mothman sighting, we'd love to hear about it. If you've got your own theory on multiple moth Mothman sightings, by all means share it with us. As always, thank you for listening and thank you for subscribing.